Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we are going over my five, five favorite filling recipes for macarons. We are going to up our mac game today 500 fold. So let's get to it, let's go. I have got my secret recipes right in this book. This is years of trial and error, and I'm excited to share with you some of my favorite fillings for your macarons. We are going to focus on concept and technique in the beginning, and we'll lump all of those recipes at the end for your convenience. So number one, let's start with Swiss meringue buttercream. This is my favorite of the buttercreams. It's the least sweet, and it is pairs really well with the sweet macaron shells. So let's get to the key points when you're making this. So we've got a clean, dry bowl fitted for a stand mixer. You're gonna pour your egg whites in there. You can scale directly in the, your sugar into that bowl. Then you're gonna go to a double boiler, put your stand mixer bowl over your double boiler, making sure it is not touching the actual water. You just want the steam bath. Whisk until you reach a safe pasteurized temperature, which is about 62 Celsius or 144 Fahrenheit. After you get to this temperature, your egg whites will be white, your sugar will be melted, and you will have this very liquidy syrup that you will now switch to your stand mixer fitted with a whisk attachment and whisk that up on medium to high speed until it's cooled and at stiff peaks. Once it's cooled to about 30 Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit, which is below your butter melting point, you can add your butter. You're gonna want a European high fat content butter to go with this recipe. Once you fit in, once you put in all your butter, you can switch to a paddle attachment and whip that up on low speed, incorporating all your butter really well into your meringue. And voila, you've got this beautiful, silky, light buttercream that is way less sweet than your typical American buttercream. Moving on to number two. We're gonna go over American buttercream. This is the safest and the most convenient for home bakers. It doesn't have egg whites to cook, so it's safest for your customers. However, it can be pretty sweet. So I am gonna tell you my lemon rosemary buttercream recipe. The American buttercream with a twist that'll help pack a punch that will take away the sweetness. So first, you're gonna wanna macerate rosemary into lemon juice. Freshly squeezed lemon juice is best. Cut up your rosemary, make it nice and fragrant. Put it into your lemon juice and let it macerate for at least six hours. After the flavors have been instilled in your lemon juice, make sure you strain it. You don't want any bits of rosemary to go directly into your buttercream. And you don't want any seeds as well. So you take softened, regular American butter. You do not need European butter for this. In fact, I don't recommend it. Softened butter in your stand mixer. Whip it up nicely until it's white and fluffy. Then you'll add your powdered sugar a little bit at a time and whip it up again. You want all the powdered sugar to be dissolved. Make sure it's really incorporated. Scrape the bottom of your bowl and then you can add your lemon juice. Tablespoon by tablespoon to your buttercream. It's important not to put too much lemon juice into your buttercream or else it will curdle. 
it'll separate and it will not be pretty. And voila, you've got a delicious tart American buttercream that is gonna fill your macaron up beautifully. Moving on to number three. This is the classic chocolate ganache. This is going to be my dark chocolate ganache because I think it pairs beautifully with that sweet shell of their macaron. Key points on when you're making your dark chocolate ganache. You're gonna first chop up your chocolate. You want it to be nice and small so it melts evenly. Heat up cream with a little sugar so it doesn't burn on your stove top till it simmers. Pour that simmering cream directly onto your chocolate. Let it sit for two to three minutes to do its job, to melt it, and then you're going to whisk. I actually use a spatula so I stir from the middle, trying not to incorporate too much air, and gently do circular motions from the middle out. This is called emulsification and you're making this beautiful, shiny ganache out of your cream and your chocolate. Once you have that beautiful, shiny chocolate ganache, you're going to add some of that ganache into a separate bowl with some room temperature butter. Mix your ganache with that butter until that is homogenous. And this is the part where you're tempering in butter into your ganache so it has a full body flavor. Once you've made a homogenous mixture with your butter and a little bit of your chocolate ganache, you're going to pour that butter mixture back into your big ball of ganache and um, stir one more time from the middle out, gently not trying to incorporate air until it's homogenous one more time. Once you're done emulsifying your chocolate ganache, you're gonna wanna cover it with plastic wrap or something else directly on the surface of the ganache so it doesn't develop a skin. And then once it's set, you're ready to pipe. All right, moving on to our fourth recipe for our macaron fillings. It is the crowd pleaser, salted caramel. For salted caramel, it can be intimidating, but once you get these steps down, it's gonna be no problem whatsoever. First, you're going to put your sugar and water into a clean saucepan. You want to put that on low heat until your sugar is dissolved. Once your sugar is dissolved, you can turn up your heat to medium high and let it do its thing. You want it to reach a nice caramel amber color. And as soon as it gets to that, turn off your heat and deglaze with warm cream. Whisk vigorously as you pour the warm cream in. And once it stops hissing at you, you can add your butter. And be careful not to splash yourself with your hot caramel. Immediately after your butter is all incorporated, put the caramel into another bowl and put over an ice bath to stop the cooking. Caramel can easily get burnt and you wanna make sure it doesn't continue to cook in your pan. So again, I reiterate, switch to a different bowl after you've incorporated all of your butter and put it into an ice bath that's going to help stop the cooking. Once you have put your caramel into a separate bowl, you can add your flavoring. I like to add a little bit of vanilla bean paste, which is really gonna up the flavor. It's expensive, but it's really worth it. You only use a little bit. And salt to taste. And voila! You've got a delicious caramel. You're gonna wanna let it cool down in the refrigerator until you're ready to fill. And then it's nice and thick with all the butter we put in this recipe for a filling to hold by itself. Or you could whip it up and it even takes on a buttercream texture. 
So there you go. It's a nice little bonus. Basically, I'm giving you six recipes. Once you whip that salted caramel, it's a salted caramel buttercream. So an extra for you guys. Mine's blown. All right, guys, we're almost there. Number five, another favorite and a great one for people who have allergies or who are dairy sensitive is a jam. The in-depth process of making jams is a little out of our range for this specific video, but we are looking to do an entire episode on jams and jellies and canning in the future. So until then, you can either go to your local farmer's markets or vendors and buy local sourced jams, which I do for my strawberry rhubarb jam, and it's so tasty. Or you can try your hand at making jam yourself. For my mixed berry jam, I do a fruit to sugar ratio of 1.25 to 1. So say you have 125 grams of your berries, your mixed berries, you would want 100 grams of sugar to go with that. And then squeeze a little bit of an acid in there. You could put lemon juice or anything, but those berries are going to have enough pectin in it. You don't have to add pectin, which is why I love this jam. All it is is berries and sugar and lemon juice. So super fresh, super refreshing, and nice and tart for your macaron shells. So to recap our five filling recipes, really six if you add that bonus, we've got number one, my favorite, the Swiss meringue buttercream. Nice, light, airy, and pairs beautifully with your macaron shells. Number two, we've got the American buttercream, which is the safest and most convenient for the home baker. So number three, we went over the classic, dark chocolate ganache. Again, pairs wonderfully with your sweet macaron shells because it is not too sweet and it has a little delicious bitterness in it. And our fourth one was our crowd pleaser, our salted caramel recipe, which was basically a bonus, two in one. We've got a buttercream if you whip it, and if you don't whip it good, it's this delicious, more chewy texture caramel that is an awesome center in your macaron shell. And our fifth and final filling we went over tonight is our jam. I specifically gave you the ratio for my mixed berry jam, which is nice and tart and my husband's favorite. It gives you the nice kick in the back of your cheeks that pairs beautifully with your sweet macaron. All right, guys, we made it through our top five fillings, kind of six for the evening. And I just wanna thank you. We had done a poll on Instagram before this and you guys picked this topic. So thanks for your interactions. When you try these Mac fillings at home, Tag Bake Du Jour so we can see your beautiful creations. Tell us how they taste and let us know how we did. If you have more questions about the filling or the procedure and you have need troubleshooting, comment below. If you guys liked this video, make sure to smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and we will be so thank you guys. Peace out. And we roll the dice.